is. Damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new. Smell like can too. I'm fresh forever like can food. Try and tell me what I can't do. I want to see the world. My vision on sham mood. I mean, I got goals that's real big. Foes that's real big. Your offer too little. Sorry, my soul is real big. Coming into the ring with blows that's real big. I got to do it big. That's the only way I can live. Except and ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids. Just kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big, jobs that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars is real big. I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live. Hey man, I just can't find a comfortable headset. I mean, I've tried everything. Literally everything. Jeez, my brother. I got you. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Oh, that is comfortable. What sound experience would you like to know? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 Wireless? On its way, sir. Sounds amazing. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. What would you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head. I think too small, I got big dreams. You just starting, I'm way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. My people, they got a sore, I'm putting that on the Lord. Ain't accepting, ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids. Just kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big, job that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars is real big. I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live. And I promise I'm trying to. Before you count me out, homie, let me remind you. They was blocking the shine, now I think it's my time to. Capping them dollar signs like lights, they'll blind you. Let me rewind to. Back when I was broken, I couldn't acquire two cents. And now I got two wrists. They was sleeping on me, homie, must have got too big. Call my phone, I be like, who this? Damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new. Smell like can too. I'm fresh forever like can food. Try and tell me what I can't do. I want to see the world. My vision on sham mood. I mean, I got goals that's real big. Foes that's real big. Your offer too little. Sorry, my soul is real big. Coming into the ring with blows that's real big. I got to do it big. That's the only way I can live. Accept and ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's got to be real big. I got to make it just for my kids and for their kids. Just kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother.
Jesse, I woke up with the biggest smile on my face this morning because I realized that tonight is ECAC Overwatch 2. And then that smile got bigger because I realized who's playing tonight. We have Concord University versus Mount St. Mary. I'm Sam Talks. Joining me is Jesse. And Jesse, I mean, these two teams, they've been going at it throughout the seasons and or, or throughout this season. And I mean, 4-1 is what these two teams are sitting at right now. So we know that these are two really good teams. Yeah, two extremely good teams, kind of near the top of that standings right now, waiting for a few of those 5-0 and teams to lose today uh, to try and see if they can climb up to that 5-1 and ranking. But yeah, you look at it, these teams, they are on a tear right now. But I will say that the Mount lost last week, first loss of the season. Concord has kind of been winning for a few times now. They lost back in week two. But the thing is, with that team... They're now three and two. They lost to USF. The team that the Mount lost to is now as well I believe, in Boise State, who are five and zero. Oh. So it could be that little bit of a difference of who they played, but honestly, it's pretty up in the air right now. Yeah, so it's kind of things that kind of that, that make you wonder, like where is this? Which direction is the is this game going to go on? And I think a lot of that is going to determine happening with the maps that we're going to be playing on tonight. Starting yeah. off with Oasis, going into Kings Row, then Junkertown. Ishperanza, Li Zhang, and if we need to, for a tiebreaker, Nepal. Now, we can talk about Oasis a little bit here, Jesse, because Oasis is like that, well, another control map, but Oasis also has some really interesting uh, sort of ways that you can play around it. Yeah, especially, you know, you get around to university, it's pretty brawly, I would argue. Gardens is the same way. You get to city center, though. It is so high ground driven. Like we may see more of those Winston comps there. And we're in this kind of this weird place to where the patch was supposed to happen yesterday. Yeah. Has issues right before it gets delayed to tomorrow. So teams, when they were probably preparing for that patch that we kind of already knew those patch notes, we're still on that previous patch to where Zarya is still very good. Diva is well in a great spot. Somber didn't have her nerfs. Neither did Genji. So now it's like, okay. Do you, try and play the meta out this final day on this previous patch or do you just start with the prep that you had for the next patch in tonight's match yeah and that's the issue that these teams are going to run into because you have you have so much more options than what you originally had and in fact we are going to be starting off with city center so here it is the winston meta is more than likely something that we're going to be seeing we're going to find out here in a couple of seconds once everything opens and i mean Jesse is covering on it right now. We have a Roadhog, and we, we, we've we been seeing some Roadhog lately. Yeah, and I'm just like, oh, okay, are we are we actually going to do it? Like, yeah, that's what I, that's I, what I want to see from the mall. Like, okay, are you going to actually commit to this, or are you kind of just trolling us? Exactly, that's why I haven't, like, immediately written it off, because Roadhog has actually been really coming into his own, once again, especially for the people who are actually going to be playing them. Mount St. Mary's, though, forsaking the soldier, not electing to go for it. And they are sticking with the hog. Interesting. So taking a play that's kind of been in the contender's Korea circuit as of recent and running that hog here with the Sombra. It's going to be that little bit of extra damage they're going to look for and making sure that they actually land the hooks. But this is the problem when you have a Reaper that's going to be in your face. It's going to deal a lot of damage to try to scare away the Roadhog. But we're still back and forth right now. Kills coming in from both sides. As you can see, the Reaper is going to try and regroup with their team, get some necessary healing. Serial is going to work around with their Sombra, try to find out the right hack targets. But when Serial is making a, a good, fantastic hooks like that, it's just so nice. And it looks like Cozy's just chilling out in spawn room right now. Don't know if that's a tech issue or what. But Akihabara, once again, you have the Sojourn here. You're able to put consistent DPS pressure. And that's one thing that you have if you have a Roadhog with a Sojourn. You build up to Railgun shots, but Serial keeps landing kill after kill. So you're kind of taking away the power of what Concord has had so far, Jesse. This is, it's such a weird dichotomy of like play styles because Zero is basically just hunting down Akibara. Like that's all they've been trying to do. They are gonna, well, gonna take that as they get it. As Letter M falls for the second time already to that fatal hook. But it's, I think Concord are a bit sure like, oh, we're playing a hog that's just not missing. Yeah, I know he, I don't think he's missed a single hook. Every single time we're looking at this insane road hog, it's hook after hook after hook, and people are going down like flies. It's been an insane level of gameplay from this Roadhog, and it's kind of it kind of makes sense why we've been seeing Roadhog so much lately. And I think they already have their ultimates. 
Did you win? Also, Moses elected already. Okay, we're just going to back off the Sombra. Maybe not going to be worth it with that Winston in play going no over way. to no the way. soldier. But it doesn't matter when your hog just hits hooks. <laughs> they threw that hook out, Jesse. And it's like it's like one of those crane games that just pulled out a Lucio. Yeah, it's just like the letter M. Poor, she's just getting hooked left and right. Like, she cannot get away from it three times already at 50%, and Concord's had enough, and they're just going to go to the hog themselves. I mean, if you can't beat them, join them, right? This is their strategy, Concord. I, I respect that. The question is, can you land just as many of those fat hooks as Zerio can? It looks like you might be able to, and now you're going in on top of the Death Blossom. Apollo was only able to get one before Zerial, the Zerial hooker, goes crazy. And now we have Akihabara popping off using their own railgun. Responding now as Cozy draws their blade, the letter M is going to pop the beat, negating almost entirely that dragon blade. And now we're looking around. We're trying to see if we can find another headshot. By the way, I did say that we popped the overclock. We did not. Akihabara was just using a straight up railgun shot. So they still have that in their pocket. Conquered does manage to make the flip for Mount St. Mary's gets to 69%. It's at least pretty decent there for Con I mean, for Mount St. Mary's. Okay, you get it that high, but use a lot. You almost use everything in your arsenal at that point. As the staggers also come on through. Moses now on the Cassidy. Actually, maybe try and tank push a little bit more. Going to be taken. Oh, and Mr. Business does fall. And now Concord, without that tank, got to be looking for this hook yet again. Oh, Serial letter M. She can't catch a break. She really can't. Now it's turning uh, turn the attention back over to Apollo. Thankfully, though, Akihabara saving the day using that overclock. Headshot onto Zerial. And now we're looking around for our next target. See if there's anyone potentially who might be able to come out. A Kitsune Rush from Captain Quinnis is going to come through. And you have a Cassidy inside of that who's able to fire off that revolver at speeds unknown to the human mind. They do go down. Mr. Business makes it back up, regroups with the rest of their team, using the whole hog to try and push off as many people as they possibly can. Hook goes out, but it's going to miss Cozy, who, by the way, already has another Dragon Blade ready and available to them. The opportunity to use it is there. They're going to more than likely hold on to it, especially with the death of Apollo there. But we still have it kind of back and forth, so this is actually going to force Cozy to use the Dragon Blade in order for them to secure the point. But Conquer mentioned to get 81% before uh, losing it. You could really tell Cozy, okay, do I need this? Do I need this? And I message, okay, just got to pull the plug and use that blade. Probably won't have it for the rest of this round, but that's honestly okay for Mount St. Mary's. You have the whole hog still available from Zero. You will have that dead eye still from Moses in the back pocket, and they're already setting up on that high ground. The only real player on Conqueror that can challenge them is going to be Akibara from this long range. And we're going to see just how well this is going to work out for them. Moses, though, pop at the dead eye. Oh my goodness! The letter M unfortunately caught out while they're trying to skate in onto point. And now you have this Cassidy who just gets free reign on the high ground. You're going to have to try and get rid of them. And now going in Apollo gets actually a double kill, taking out both of the supports from Mount St. Mary's. They've run out of options. And now Sail Sprite hiding out in the back is going to be using their Kitsune Rush. Zerial only has so many places to go. And with no heal available to them, Apollo, that is just going to be an execution for them. As we're now brought into overtime for Mount St. Mary's, Concord is able to get the kills. It looks like they're not able to make the flip just happen yet. As I think... It's a combination of Cozy and maybe Toast who are trying to draw this out as long as they possibly can. And the way that they're stalling this out, Jesse, I think reinforcements might be able to come in. Yes, Zerial's coming back on the Winston. Now everybody else is back in play and they still have that sound barrier that Concord had to use, or maybe not had to use, they kind of just willingly used during the middle of that fight. This is actually, actually oh, insane right now! No way! They left the point! And in doing so, Mount St. Mary's is able to take it. But even if they hadn't stepped off the point, Jesse, I mean, that kill feed was lighting up for Mount St. Mary's. It, it partially was. They were backing up. I think it was a clutch boop as well from Toast that knocked Mr. Business off. But that's that's rough. It um, is. That's, it is. that's a rough way to start a series if you're Concord. And I think for them, it's like, okay. How do we play against this hog? It took them a while to get used to that. And by the time they actually did, it's just a very late and very, yeah, very late sound barrier and kind of unnecessary from the letter M that kind of steamrolls that process a little bit for Mount St. Mary's to get back into it. And now the Orissa is out with pharmacy in play. These are some strange compositions. And, you know, Jesse, I know we were talking about, like, 
crazy compositions, but I don't think we were quite expecting this, but that was some really good maneuvering from Akihabara to make sure that they did not get hooked by Zerial. We also have Moses on a Hanzo, by the way. So a lot of potential there to be able to find something to poke with. Now you just have a rogue Roadhog in your back line. It's turning the attention over to them immediately and in rare form for Zerial did not actually land the hook onto Apollo, but she's still dealing so much damage. And Akihabara is just not able to put in as much work as what Cozy just did there. They got a double kill dash. They realize that, okay, everybody's kind of clumped in that stairwell. We can just pinch them from both angles, and it's a 3v5 with Akibar and the letter M both in the air, and it's a perfect setup. Zerio goes in from the back. Cozy, as you said, with the double dash, able to clean it up. And Mount St. Mary's again on the right track. I have a feeling Mr. Business may swap soon, especially if Zerio does continuously get hooks on them, as no matter what, if you're in that javelin spin, that hook still getting you. And it's going to hurt a lot once they do pull you in. Mr. Business, they do have a lot of health. Moses already showing why Hanzo can be a dangerous factor. As they're just spamming down the arrows, they get a headshot of the sail sprite. You've also forced out the res from the letter M. And so now options are starting to become limited for Conquer. They need to get onto site, but already at 40%. And there we have it. You're going to hook in the Orisa. They do use the Javelin spin, but Mr. Business is finding it a lot stronger to burn through the health. Meanwhile, Moses, while down on the ground, Picks out the annoying mosquito of Akihabara, and this one is just walking in and taking out the rest of Concord. And they get so split on me. Yeah, Mr. Biz is gonna like to back. I mean, jump off, and yeah, still sprites at least trying to get one Ooh. to go with them, but not able to get Captain Aquinas right before. And nothing's going right for Concord right now. They're already going off that Orisa back onto the Winston and the Spara pick. On paper, it's like, oh, they don't have a hit scan, but it's like, no, they have Moses on Hanzo. It'll, it'll do. It'll do. Yeah, it'll do. Now that's a good opening pick though, taking up Toast. And so now you have your Rocket Barrage. It's starting to become a little bit more difficult with the fact that Apollo has been taken out. Oh. Now the letter M2 on top of that. So you're, uh, Akiabar, you're trying really hard to take out Moses. You may be able to, but now your escape options are so limited. You're stuck there, down you go. And Toast is back for a little bit of revenge, able to avenge their death just a little bit earlier. And we're at 97%. Does anybody even touch? At least it looks like, yeah, Mr. Business on the backside. A point able to touch with Mount St. Mary's has all the ults in the world. And they do a nice job for Mr. Business, though, to take out Cozy while they were using their... Oh, my goodness! Serial, you're just getting a double kill with a whole hog, pushing people off. And I mean... Jesse, we gotta talk about this. Conquered the entire time had a nice lineup of ultimates that they could have used here. But we saved it right at the very end into overtime. I mean, you kind of had to use it, but still, Mount St. Mary's, they just seem like an indomitable team to go up against right now as they take Oasis. MSMU, like that is, that's a statement right there. It's okay, you know, we're gonna throw this wacky comp out there that is gonna be more meta once the patch actually hits. And we're going to play extremely well in it purely because, and a lot of it, Zero just does not miss these hooks. Look at that. Nice. Finish off the shot. No fear. Kills the Farah as well. And Mount St. Mary is just on an absolute tear. And it just seemed like Concord had no answers for it. It's like, all right, the Farah should work. But Moses is like, nah, even with the Hanzo. <laughs> you headshotting the Mercy out of the air, denying the Farah. Nothing went right, and as you said, they held on to three ultimates, and they they eventually built up three ultimates. They didn't even get the other two yeah. for Concord, but the way Mount St. Mary's was winning that fight in these fights throughout the map, they didn't have to use any. So they're sitting on five when you think, oh, we may have an alt advantage. No, they have, they have all five because they haven't had to use any. Yeah, it, it, it was kind of that weird situation where it's like, all right, we're playing with this composition right now that should theoretically work against MSU, MSMU, yeah. but it's not. And I think them wanting to stick with the pharmacy combo kind of hurt them in the end because we saw just how long Akihabara was holding on to that rocket barrage. They held on to it for so long. They wanted to find the right opportunity. But when they tried to go into the back line, when they tried to go and get a kill, their entire team was wiped off the map. And I think it was that sort of inflexibility that kind of lended them holding on to ultimates for too long that kind of lended them that loss there. But I mean, Kings Row, we're going on to the next map. And I'm still a little bit scared for Conquer because Roadhog on Kings Row, that's like, that's still a really good map for Roadhog. It is, but at least for that, you could argue, okay, Ryan is very good on that map. Yes. When on Oasis, he can struggle at times, especially on City Center. So maybe that's the route that Concord goes. I'm on it. I'm a little worried. I'm with you as well. I'm a little worried for Concord here because this is probably a punch they were not expecting.
right? Like they're not expecting the hog to come out. And for once, it seems like it's not the sojourns that are the heavy impact. We've barely talked about them. And we at least in round one, when they were both in play, they weren't that much of a factor because it was so much up to a tank yeah. duel and the back line not getting picked off right away. As we said, the letter M got hooked four times in like yes. 80%. And it's just like, you cannot afford to have your main support getting hooked left and right. So I'm curious to see for Concord, you need to have a little bit more of appeal for your back line if you're the DPS line. And then in turn, if Zero is running the hog, run an Ana. I know she's not meta, but against the hog, she might yeah. be one of the only things that'll get you over the line. I mean, you really had to think about what Ana is able to bring to the table, right? You said it yourself. Yeah. She's not meta. But against a Roadhog, the anti-nade denies him the chance to be able to heal. You go in with a sort of a typical composition that you see. Maybe uh, bring a Reaper in there. You stick with the Sojourn. You can still throw a Winston out. But it's all hinging on making sure that you land those anti-nades. But if you take away a lot of what Zeriel is able to do, which is being able to get in, get a hook, kill somebody, then get the heck out of there, heal themselves back up so that way they can keep rinsing and repeating time and time again. If you take that away from them, at the very least, if they get a pick, you might be able to trade it out. It's 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 kind of like, okay, we're, we're limited on options, but I mean, we got to try something because this Roadhog has been tearing through us. Yeah, and at least the bright spot is they've been willing to try out some things, right? Like yeah. they tried to go on the Winston. They tried to go on the Orissa. You know, they're trying out this pharmacy. It's where... Well, obviously, we don't know if that's what they were actually running in scrims, but it's like, okay, you're trying to do it. I would love to see that support line change, though. And it's probably, I would assume, going to be a, poly, a stale sprite, I should say, that takes over that role. But, again, I'm a little worried here to see what they kind of do. I would also love for them to start on the defense. As then you can set it, okay, you're not getting anything done. We control the angles. And as long as they kind of keep an eye on a hotel to make sure he's not flanking back there, they should be able to have a pretty decent hold. Yeah, because we got to talk about that too. The, the Roadhog flank. I mean, we saw it happen in Gardens for Oasis. They were going up onto the high ground to try and take it away, give the pharmacy a little bit of a chance to be able to do what they do best and control high ground. But Roadhog was like, eh, I'm just, I'm just going to walk up there. I'm, I'm going to yeah. walk up behind you. I'm going to set things up so that way you're paying attention to me. Meanwhile, my Genji is getting away with literal murder and I'm still dealing an absolute metric ton of damage. And while still being shielded from the pharmacy who can't really do anything to me while I'm sitting inside. Exactly. We saw it. There's like, hey, just going to walk through disruptor shot. Not going to give a care in the world. And just, all right, going to try and hook you. If not, it's okay. The Genji's up top waiting for you. So it's, it was very rough for Concord. They're going to start on the offense first, which I guess you can take it on the other set, right? Like, okay, we want to set the tone on our offense and give us a lot of time. So I don't mind it still. They're at least teasing the hog right now in the Widow. Mount St. Mary is now maybe going back to a little bit more meta uh, with Zerial on that Zarya and Moses as well, starting on the Widow maker. We'll see if we see that Widow headshot very early from either side. But I like this view from Mount St. Mary's early. I have a feeling Conquered will shift back to a more meta pick once he realizes, like, oh, Zerial's not on Roadhog. Yeah, Mount St. Mary's is flexing right now a little bit. I think they're understanding how they're able to play here. We might have a duel of the Widows, but Moses on the Widowmaker could be something to see here. A potential interesting uh, defense hold. I mean, you, do, you typically don't get to see Widowmaker very often here. It's usually the attacking Widowmaker. But already the action is getting thick and heavy, Jesse. A quick hook from Mr. Business onto Zerio, but not able to secure the kill as Moses is already popping off on the Widowmaker with a headshot onto Akiabara, looking for a good angle to be able to find another one. But now we're sick. We're kind of seeing the Roadhog already putting in the effort. They're putting in the work. They get a kill onto Toast, taking away the main support for Mount St. Mary's. And so now once reinforcements come in, down goes Cozy. Uh, the Widowmaker was able to get a kill, but really at that point, they're playing angles, they're playing smart. A Graviton Surge already from Zerial? That is an insanely quick grab. And it looks like the grab was actually good enough to be able to save the day for Mount St. Mary's. It does save them, and not even a tick on that point, as Concord's win condition there was like, alright, we're just gonna pocket Mr. <laughs> Business through Stale Spray, and just try and play for picks. At that point, he was like, I'll just farm damage, I guess, and just truck grab in, knowing you're not gonna have it, as Toast, Toast. Didn't, was not able to get much of the healer, though they're just trying to disrupt a little bit here in this backline, Ooh. and... Ooh. Take it away! Wow. There's a way! 
There is no way that they were able to get away like that. Now Zerial angry, supercharged, and you can see just what a 100 charge Zarya can do, even to a Roadhog. They are tearing through them. Everyone is falling to this fury. Now it's gonna be a desperate attempt for Sales right to be able to get away. They do. Jesse, I gotta say real quick though, Zerial is already at 66%. That's that's a scary thought. That is uh, an extremely scary thought. Like, all right, they're almost at another grab when the majority of the team is getting to their first alt. Um, yeah. <laughs> including Cozy, who is getting eerily close to that blade. I can honestly see them comboing it, especially after getting that pick off onto Apollo, who's now on that tracer. They're really wanting to stick. Uh, Conquered is really wanting to stick with the combination that they have right now. That's a really good pick from Sales Sprite. Now we're going to have the Kitsune rush to push them forward. But Zerial is going to pop their Graviton Surge. It's going to be once again the great equalizer for Mount St. Mary's as no one is able to quite get on the point yet. Now we have another Kitsune rush this time around. Akihabara is landing the shots. His toast is feeling the full brunt of that. Apollo is taking out the annoying Widowmaker. Zerial, meanwhile, is going to try and put on their bootstraps, carry the team as best they can as kills after kill are going to be coming in. But Mr. Business rotating back around to help their teammates support them. Cozy trying their best, but it looks like it might be just a little bit more insurmountable. But we've seen just what Cozy and Toast are capable of, how long they can stall out these points. As these two are doing a fantastic job of that so far, buying as much time as they can for reinforcements to come in. And they know it's okay to give up a tick or so, but they're trying to focus down Stales right here now with the beat, them and their Kiriko able to push on in. They've stalled enough time, but they forced Concord off the point in the Mountain Lions. Have nowhere to go, just put back to spawn. Unbelievable for how Cozy and Toast are able to do this again. Just the two of them to be able to hold on to a point and prevent it from being taken. Captain Quinnis, that's not good though. Mr. Business are now finding the business into these hooks. Akihabara as well, putting in the effort. Zerial, another Graviton? Are you serious? How many? That is the third one in this round alone. But this time around, unfortunately for them, not quite as impactful as I think they were hoping for. Akihabara overclock is coming up clean with a kill. And finally, finally for Conquer, they're able to take the point. I just want to give credit as well before we go on to the second phase. Zerial and uh, Captain Aquinas, they didn't get as much. I mean, they stole for so long for Cozy and Toast and Moses to get back into that fight. So credit to them as well for stalling it out as long as they did. But Zerial, as you said, almost averaging a grab a minute, just a little over a minute right now. Ooh, that's a really good protection, Suzu. It wasn't quite enough to be able to save Zerial, unfortunately, as Mr. Business's whole hog is giving them a lot of trouble here. Now it's just being able to hunt down the stragglers as best they can. Most is all by themselves. Eh, just uh, chill out for a second. Yeah, just gonna kind of hang out. I was like, all right, well, never mind. Oh. Got some uh, unexpected visitors here on the side ground. And while they get one, they take on Akamara. And able to get that kill in this cart, not even moving right now as well. So Mount St. Mary's have plenty of time here to try and set up. As Zero's already setting up for this final corner hold. I'm halfway to another ground. Like, what else can you say? Seriously, it's just the gameplay right now from Zero has just been worthy of what a tank is capable of. We're going to see if Cozy is going to be able to use this Dragon Blade now. They're hunting down the Tracer, who's not inside of that. Cozy is really determined to be able to take down Apollo, who is so low on health, but Apollo being the Tracer that they are is so sneaky. And it was going to be a really difficult for Cozy to be having impact with that Dragon Blade, but oh. Mount St. Mary's, they're just so fantastic. As Zerial, once again, another Graviton Surge. Didn't really catch anybody inside of it, but it throws Conquered off their game. And now for Mr. Business, is trying to get out of there. Regrouping with the rest of the team. It looks like this could be looks like they're not gonna be able to indeed Moses the ash pick getting out the Widowmaker looked like it was the right choice there Yeah, cozy just gets Apollo out of the fight, right? They have to go back here to get this mega when they have that pulse bomb not able to use it And as you said the grav doesn't get much but it separates Concord a bit to where they're able to focus down those targets Moses now over on the Ash, at least has that ability now to get away from that Sojourn and Tracer. And now Winston, if they decide to pressure him, Cozy is trying to do the pressuring themselves, not even allowing Apollo to get any space. And this is just insane, I think, from all of Mount St. Mary's right now, Jesse. Just how well that they're playing. And a really good protection Suzu comes in once again, a clutch factor to be able to save them from that pulse bomb. Now we have Mr. Business on the Winston to try and dive in as quickly as possible. But with Zerial on this Zarya, who is, by the way, once again, not been nerfed. It's pain. Wow. 
that was pure and simple. <laughs> that was quite insane. Um, as they're gonna have, yeah, they're gonna have Blade, Baba, Kitsune Rush, and Grab. Yeah, this might just be done. Yeah, I think so. This round is looking like it's gonna go away. A last ditch effort from Mr. Business to try and get onto the payload, but not even being brought into overtime is conquered. 80.34 meters. Uh, Mount St. Mary's, I mean, Jesse, they don't have far to go. Five grabs in six and a half minutes. That's insane. That is. That's insane. That's a deadlift right there. That is yes. legitimately a deadlift from Zero, but it's not like they're solo carrying this team and the rest of the team is doing nothing. Like, we've seen the picks from Moses time and time again. Cozy, honestly, more of their values in putting pressure onto Apollo and yep. Akabara so they can't get value. Toast is speeding Zerial around like they're just, you know, on a race course. Like, all right, you know, here we go. Left, right, you know, let's go. And Captain Aquarius is keeping them up 24-7. It's such great team play from Mount St. Mary's that Concord can do nothing about it. And they're now going to go over to that Zarya pick, which I think at this point you need to conform to the meta and go over to that, even if you're not the most confident on it. And just when we think Mount St. Mary's might have settled into a tank, they may t they're at least teasing us with a another tank to add to their resume here in the JQ. Zeriel is really, if they do go out with that Junker Queen, it's just, at, at that point, it's like, okay, <laughs> you can play everything, Zeriel. We get it, please. Uh, Conquer, I mean, Conquered on the other hand, though, it, it's once again, that inflexibility, I think, is really hurting them there. You stuck with Roadhog the entire time. Sure, it was working for you at one point, and you switched to Winston at the end, but I was like, ah, at the end, it, it, maybe switching to the Zarya a little bit earlier could have had a little bit more impact here. And indeed, Zeriel going with the Junker Queen, proving that they can do it all. The question is, can they? We'll see. Um, right now, as we're trying to go inside of Hotel Mount St. Mary's, a little disjointed, playing a little bit uh, all over the place, but that's typically how we like to see them do it. You're gonna see the shout come in, but Zeriel with the Junker Queen might be just having a little bit of fun right now, Jesse. Yeah, maybe try to have a little bit too much fun with that. I have a feeling they're going to swap. I'll have to wait and see here in a few seconds. Yep, there it goes. Um, it usually, oh, you know, with uh, the swing there, you can, you know, get a lot of that tick damage, but all it takes is a cleanse from Stale Spray, and all that goes away. So Zero quickly realizes, like, okay, uh, I want to have fun, but let's just go back on the Zarya that is just ridiculously OP, and I was absolutely insane at in the previous run. I'm just chilling out right now. Nothing really going on. Zerio wanted to try and take down Apollo, but Apollo is able to wrape out of there very quickly. Zerio is going to take a lot of damage. Both of the bubbles have been expended, but in doing so, they are now at full 100 charge. Cozy, however, on the other hand, Fearless. They're going to go in the face of Mr. Business, who is also very well charged themselves. And now we have a Graviton Surge already from Zerio, who made the switch over. We do have the whole new way that Overwatch mechanics work. They're at 30%. So when they switched over to Junker Queen, but still, the fact that Zerio was adding Graviton Surge before Mr. Business. Wow. Says a lot. Yeah. It says that sense alone says the entire story of this matchup so far is Mr. Business just hasn't been allowed to play the game. Right, like they're getting focused down. Their supports are getting picked off in the back line, and especially Moses with the stick, not gonna be able to get it. Unfortunate for them, but it's a Tracer. They can build up to it relatively quickly. Cozy, on the other hand, still has their Dragon Blade. They're not gonna be able to use it this life around, but for Concord, it's an ideal situation for them as they're able to set up at the archways, a potential bulwark for them to be able to push back Mount St. Mary's and give themselves some breathing room finally here. But the way that Zerio's playing is going to be so difficult. Mr. Business already trying to get in their face is forced away once again. They're going to use their Graviton Surge, expend that there. And now Akihabara, you've committed three ultimates from Conquer. Three ultimates. Mount St. Mary's does not care. They still just pile through. It's like, all right, no, we have the coalescence for it. It's fine. You know, don't worry about it, guys. We have the coalescence. We have this. We have the coalescence to use early so that the beat can actually land on time, and just beautiful from Mount St. Mary's. Even though Cozy does get a little, a little shut down there. Uses the blade while in the grab and just gets headshot by the overclock. But even with that pickup right there, the letter M picked off. Yeah, nobody. Oh, yeah, nobody touches the grab's grab so time. big. <laughs> MSMU is sending out a statement right now, Jesse, that they want to take this series in a 3-0 fashion. And I mean, here on King's Row, as they take another win, going on to match point, Concord, 
The reverse sweep has to happen now. Yeah, that was we. I mean, I thought Oasis went rough that second round. Wow. Um, how do you come back from that if you're Concord? That's got to be what you're asking yourselves right now. Okay, like, how? Where do we start with fixes? Because Mount Saint Mary's is playing near perfection right now. They're getting the only thing I would say with them. They're getting a little bit overzealous at ults when yeah. they feel like the route and the match is getting close. And they're getting maybe a little bit too over aggressive, cozy especially on some of these engages, maybe getting a little too greedy. But other than that, there's barely any flaw to their game right now. And for Concord, the issue is going to be where do you try and find that crack and really force those errors? Because right now it seems like it's an impenetrable wall that's blocking Concord from winning and it's giving and it's getting Mount St. Mary in a great position to improve to five and one. Yeah, because we got to talk about this a little bit too, with the way that, uh, I, I, and and this is not to say that Concord is doing a bad job. They're no, do, I, I, they're, they're doing fantastic, but it's just that. I, I mean, Mount St. Mary's is playing at a different level right now. They, they you, you can see that Concord has moments of brilliance to be able to stand up against Mount St. Mary, but it's just the way that they play, the teamwork, the coordination, especially with covering all different angles, putting the pressure where it needs to be applied, figuring out okay. We just, we just need to, we just, you know, we just need to get the picks. We just need to let our Zarya go crazy. We need to let them build up to uh, a, an average of a graviton surge a minute, and then from there we're able to capitalize on that. And even through Mount Saint Mary's overzealousness, their overconfidence at times, they they still come back really quickly. They they figure out, okay, you know what? We we memed around a little bit, ha ha ha. Now it's time for us to really get serious and 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 put this series to bed. Yeah, you could tell as soon as Zero's like, oh, I just got wrecked on Junker Queen. Yeah. All right, time to swap. Time, like, time to go back to the, the funny character and Zarya because he's just on a different level right now. And as you said, it's not like Concord's playing bad. They're playing pretty decent. They're making a, fall, a, a small amount of mistakes here and there. But, you, you know, you're going to expect that, right? Like, no team's going to be perfect. Every team's going to make those few mistakes. Exactly. But Monte Mary's is playing at a level right now where they're honestly not making many of those and the ones that they are they're eat they're remedying super quickly that concord can't even take advantage of them so now as we head to uh junker town here for map three potentially or final i like concord trying to show a different look go on the sigma go on that bap Z. try something different and force mount st mary's to adapt to you that's what you're gonna have to do uh, it, it, it's at this point it's trying to figure out whatever hole in the armor that you can find and just apply as much pressure as you possibly can and for concord they need to figure out how to do that now the gates are going to open and i'm interested to see what moses is going to be able to do on this Widowmaker once again you can see that they've lined up they're ready akiabara was going to be their target but with the way angles that they're playing not quite able to get the shot off now they're able to sail sprite head lopped off almost immediately and moses is on a tear already a double kill in their pocket a healer taken down. Another. It's just been. It's been difficult. It's it's difficult for Concord already. That is uh the quickest reset I've seen in a while. Uh, if you're Concord, like all right, nope, wait, we are uh, we're we're dead. We have to back up. And it's just yeah, just one, two. And I actually like that they didn't shoot right away, right? Like at that point, Mount Saint Mary's, I mean, doesn't show off that hey we're on Widow, and Concord has no way to adapt to it, no way to hide, and just I can't steal Sprite taken out so early in the fight to where Mount Mary's have already practically won the fight. It's more how many more staggers they're going to suffer, and the answer is all of them. Cozy, you're unstoppable, my friend. You've already pushed them back to spawn. You're pushing them back to the second spawn now. This is point A being taken by Mount St. Mary's in a record time. And now as Apollo tries anywhere to walk, Moses is not gonna let them. Now you're gonna see them being dove on. Agiabara is going to be able to finish them off with a rail shot, but a lot of the damage has already been done by Mount St. Mary's. And at this point, it's just recovering, getting back into good form, waiting for the Widowmaker to come back before they can begin their reign of terror once more. Yeah, how many bandages can you put on before that Widow's back to try and fix this glaring issue? And Moses is actually going to swap off, going to go over back to the Soldier and knowing that, okay, now they have a few more dive characters and I'm just going to get dope 24-7. Yeah, and now we're going to switch over to the character that can 
potentially be a Widowmaker. All right, I says I'm talking cozy. Decides that it's time to whip out the Dragon Blade. Show us what a double kill is capable of. Turn their attention back around. And the only witness to all this carnage was Apollo. And they're not even gonna be able to send a message back to the team. This is gonna be an easy point B take, it looks like, for MSMU. Yeah, they won't even get close to touching. They're just have to reset again for Concrete. They haven't even been able to use an ult, right? Like, they have built up to, they've not been able to use any. We are already into final phase here. And Concord just looks stunned right now. They're not sure where to even go at this. And MSMU just oh. keep putting on the pressure. Mr. Biz is unfortunately stuck in a corner. And meanwhile, Moses was incredibly happy to see that. That's just free range firing for them. Onto poor Winston. And now for Zerio, it's time to push forward, create as much space as we possibly can. Akihabara does take down Cozy, but Moses getting revenge for their teammate, avenging them in their death, is not one to take it sitting down. No, they're gonna be able to at least fight back at least a little bit here if you're Concord. Would love to see them try and use this Primal to stay in it and the Overclock as well. They can at least get one from the Overclock. It's, uh, it's winnable if this Fitz already dies, and I hate Caster Curse. <laughs> Right there, I'm right there with you, Jesse. I'm right there with you. We say, we say words that come out of our mouth and then the exact op opposite thing happens. Uh, Cozy, a double kill, unstoppable. They are insane. Meanwhile, Concord is waiting for the spawns to come through before they try and re-engage once again. But with the way that Mount St. Mary's works, we have a Gravitic Flux online. We have an Overclock. So literally the second anyone tries to come outside, it's already throwing them up in the air, throwing them down to the ground. Overclock has been popped by Moses. You can see that Mr. Business wants to try to do anything to stop this overclock oh. from happening. No way, Moses. No way you just walk and slide into a headshot on Apollo, who is just minding their own business. Eliminated, decimated, destroyed. Mount St. Mary's takes his payload all the way with four minutes and five seconds on the clock, Jesse. Mount St. Mary's is inevitable. That's... How many... Did they have, like, what, two deaths? I think. Like, maybe... Like, they had I, one death there at the end. I don't think they lost. Yeah, I think they had Moses get jumped on. And I think, I don't know if it was Captain Akinis or Cozy that died there at the end. But that's it. Like, that's, that was it. Concord, maybe two or three Elims to their name. And Mount St. Mary's practically put their stamp into five and one as this is, this is near impossible to come back from if you're Concord. And again, it's not that... I would say the cracks started to show a little bit more there from Concord than I was hoping. Yeah, um, you can tell they got startled a little bit in that. It's like, oh, they got split. They kept getting staggered. And it was always Mount St. Mary's who committed first. And they were being the team that was proactive. Concord are always having to be reactive. And by the time they actually reacted, half their team was dead. Yeah, we wanted to see holes in the armor being exploited by Concord onto Mount St. Mary's. But instead, it happened the other way around, Jesse. Mount St. Mary's was in control that entire, literally from the second the doors opened, they were in control. They never let go. They never gave Concord a second to breathe, a second to even think about strategies. Three. No, it's just like, no, we're gonna keep just pressing W and our widow's gonna snipe you from 100 meters out. And at that point, you're just gonna have to figure it out. And Concord, sadly for them, just never did. And now Apollo, gonna at least try and get something done on this. Honestly, if you're Concord, if you even cap point and cap all the way through, doesn't matter the amount of time, you're at least staying in this. Oh, okay, though. Apollo is able to get the headshot onto Moses. Meanwhile, Akihabara is trying to get the hack onto Cozy, who is not letting this Widowmaker do anything. They're already so low on health, but while you're pressuring them, you have your DPS in Yahoo, who's got a double kill now. Okay, the true, the true terror is actually toast on Zenyatta. Yeah, Toast is like, I know, you know, zero has been having a lot of fun, Moses and Cozy as well, but I, yeah, I want to have a little bit of fun. Bit stuck on Lucio duty for a lot of the day, and able to get a few shots on our Cozy as well. It's just, where, how does the bleeding stop if you're mountain, the mountain lions no. here? And the okay. answer is, I don't know if it does. I don't Honestly, think so either. It, you're at such a rough spot now if you're Mount St. Mary, and if you're Concord, not Mount St. Mary's, um, to where it's like, okay, what do you do? And they're going to have a full swap here over to this Winston Rush with that Sombra, which honestly could help with Zerio. It could. And now we're seeing as well the letter M trying the best that they can to 
at least take out Toast. But Moses is going to be the peel to protect them. Toast in a very bad position, though. This is going to be their death. And now the payload is finally going to be able to start moving forward. But the question is, we know what MSMU is capable of. They can just back out, wait for reinforcements to come through. Really, it's it's conquered. They got to push now. Yeah, they have to take advantage. Like, oh, you know, we're actually we're up in numbers. Is this is this real life? Um, Zerial though still lives. Um, even though they're hacked. Oh, never there mind. We go. Actually, Apollo able to take him out, and that is what you need from Concord here. Build some of that momentum. Be like, okay, Mount Saint Mary's probably trolling a little bit in their composition here. Punish them for it, right? Make them change it up, and even the toast still somehow. And now Toast is going to go ahead and use their Transcendence just to keep themselves alive. Maybe a little, uh, maybe just a little panic there. Wanted to make sure that they are still with the team so that way they can hold here as the payload makes its way to point B. But I, I, I don't know about that one, Jesse. I think that was more like, I, I just don't want to die for my ego's yeah. sake. You know, and honestly, it's fair. Yeah. I think everybody has those moments. But now you do get to hold up on this high ground, which would be so difficult for Conqueror to pressure unless the entire team commits to it even though Zero missing a few hooks here and there. You can see that Concord is playing a lot more carefully, and especially now that we have the Mount St. Mary's caught inside of the EMP, but guess who was not? Cozy! And that's why you give them the Dragon Blade. They come up with a double kill, and now they're looking for another one. It's gonna be onto Apollo. They're gonna try even inside of Mr. Business, but now with Zero being able to use their whole hog, it's gonna be nothing but whole death for Concord. Zero still push far forward, hack. That is not going to scare them away. They have so many options to keep themselves alive. And when you land in hooks like that from oh. Zerial, we're seeing it now. You just walk away. You're good. Yeah, you Lover get, get initially gets hacked. And he's like, I don't know. Who are you okay. me? Like, doesn't even yeah. look at it. And as soon as yeah. they change, okay, all right, nice. Hook, dead. It's like, all right, Zerial just solves his problem just like that. And now he's going to go on the flick. And no way. Gets let her M as well. She is just having the roughest day. Jumps down and just begins the assassination. There we go, Apollo. That's what we want to see. That's the kind of death blossom that you need that this team desperately wants. Combined with the Kitsune Rush, it was only death for Mount St. Mary's. As you can see, maybe that little bit of overconfidence is starting to catch up with them. Maybe a little bit now, I think. And part of it's A, they have not much healing in their composition right now. Captain Akinas has the heavy load. A toast more of that focus fire value, which granted the way he's, you know, been playing. I, I don't blame them for the call, but it is in Concord's favor to try and draw out these fights. That it is. The longer that you can do it. Uh, well, that kind of stuff is not going to be good, though. It's still going back and forth. And actually, for Concord, it looks like that beat was actually going to be good enough to help them out here. The kills are coming in for Concord. And Moses, an echo. You're going to try as best you can, but really, you're all by yourself. You're low on HP. You might be able to pick up a health pack here to keep yourself alive, but you're going to be found out by Apollo. And Concord, they're doing a very good job. With a way that the timer is looking right now, Jesse, even if they were to get it all the way forward, it's still in MSM's favor. I will argue as a little bit of camaraderie in the chat, like, hey, I, you know, credit where credit's due. Um, it's, yeah, as you said, it's still rough. But I would say Concord's looking better now than they have the entire day. Or ever since Oasis' first round. They're at least trying, and they're getting a lot better with their target calls, and I love this somber pick. As long as they don't get run down by Zero, like they just did. Um, but Conqueror's still have the door open here. Just three minutes. No way to Zero go. Oh my god. What a Chad move from Zero to say, no, I'm going to go up to your spawn nurse. I'll get your Reaper and I'll be able to get out. No questions asked. I'm just um, going to walk away. Everything's going to be good. Yeah, no worries. This is just... Zero has no fear. Really doesn't. This is the... That, that's kind of attitude you want from your tank, right? Someone who's uh, ready to go at a moment's notice. Now we're going to see the Kitsune Rush combined with the Dragon Blade. Meanwhile, though, Moses is going to be the one to laser beam everyone down. And you see Apollo just chill out and spawn. All right, my team's dead. I'm just going to... Like, I'm, right. Yeah, I'm going to wait. Yeah, I'm just... You know, I, I would like to have my friends when I actually push in and not end up like the rest of them. Uh, oh, as they're oh, going to go over to the hook now and the hog. And nice little hook to start off. That is beautiful and brilliant. They didn't need to expend any ultimates to be able to take this here. And you can see that Zerial, all right, we need to get out. We're going to try and engage in on that. But now Apollo is feeling a lot more emboldened with the momentum that we have from our team. As you can see, we have the EMP, we have Death Blossom, and we have Kitsune Rush. We have options. They definitely have the options there. My worry is just don't use too much. Right, like, don't use too much during this fight. Try and just use Kitsune Rush and Death Blossom. Try and save EMP for next. 
this is going to be scary. Now we see the duplication from Moses onto the Reaper, so they're going to be able to build up to a Death Blossom of their own. You're bullying Stealth Sprite in the corner, body blocking them, not even allowing them to leave. And no one around to use that Death Blossom on. It's just may as well pop it. Yeah, might as well. Just a little bit of a, a little bit of show, at least for Concord. You don't use anything during that fight. Granted, you're also just getting hacked out of spawn from Ak. I mean, never mind. That was no Moses getting hacked out of spawn by Akbara. So now they can set this up. Don't have to worry about that pest in the air. And again, at least trying to get these target calls a little bit more spot on. We do have to say that Akihabara is doing a fantastic job of being able to make the necessary oh, yeah. picks that they need to, while still also doing a lot there concord on the flip side they have a full stack of ultimates this is insane the kitsune rush whole hog it's going a thousand miles a minute but concord i'm loving what i'm seeing here they just back away from it another whole hog to take away the power of genji you use a lot here to make that happen though three ultimates maybe it works out for you you still have apollo's death blossom but you have to watch out because toast can negate that I don't think that EMP hit anybody, Sam. Um, I don't know if it did, and now you, without having that, you have a less ways to try and deal with Zerial here. You know, as you said, they have Death Blossom, but he's Suzu. dead. That Protection Suzu kept them alive. That last second pro uh, Protection Suzu kept them alive. It gave Toast the opportunity to be able to use their beat. And now for Conquer, they've lost their tank. They're losing member after member, teammate after teammate. And now coming in with a Death Blossom and a last ditch effort to be able to try and get this payload into overtime. Apollo with a double kill, turning their attention back over onto Zerial, able to take them out too. Apollo putting in a lot of work along with their teammate, but the letter M, she goes down. Mr. Business is gonna make a heroic switch over to the Doomfist. You do take out Moses, but now you're running out of time slowly, but it looks like Concord might actually be able to make it, but no, the last second toast. Once the again, touch. stalling things out time and time again. Conquered, regrouped, they're gonna save here. And they're gonna actually be able to take the payload into overtime. But look at that. Look at the timer for both of these teams. Oh Jesse. God. Five so minutes. Three. I, again, I'll give credit. Conquered, completely different Conquered team than we saw on their offense and their defense. Um, but obviously the way, how poorly their defense went is going to have an impact on them here now as it is a four minute and five second difference in the time bank that is going to be extremely difficult to get through but even though in this series they haven't looked great that was the best they've probably looked all night and i love the summer pick i hope uh akabara goes back with excuse me back with it i have a feeling they will here in just a moment mount st mary's probably saw, okay we we got a little ambitious with uh the creative comps there uh, and going to try and finish this off. But honestly, if you're a team watching this right now, you're looking at this Mount St. Mary's squad. Potentially, if this does go their way, 5-1 and one on the season, you are not wanting to play them next week. Entering no. uh, the first week of a new patch to where the Roadhog meta is arguably even better than it is now. It's, I, I mean, with the way that Mount St. Mary's is playing... And Zerial, they can, they've shown us that they can pretty much play any tank under the sun as well. So it's just a matter of them getting into that patch and then really being able to have some fun with the Roadhog. And I, I, I wouldn't doubt that they'd be able to play a meme Winston as well. Cozy, before they get hit by the hack, is able to get the headshot onto the letter M. Translocate as Akihabara gets back to safety. A nice hook from Mr. Business. That's going to get rid of that annoying Widowmaker. And at the very least, once the reinforcements come in for Concord, give them an opening. You still have to watch out for Moses, who's on the Ash. But at the very, uh, uh, Widowmaker gone is a, a win. Yeah, you make him a swap as well. Cozy now going back over to that Genji, which you could also argue it's like, okay, they're playing a character that they've, you know, loved playing today. But you're at least getting this card going a little bit. You need to win this next fight, though. Try and build up that Kitsune rush. There is no other option. Time is now run out. We are going to go into overtime in less than five seconds. And so now it's up to Conquer to be able to make the necessary picks that they need to, that they have to. Cozy caught inside of the hack, but they're going to stay safe. And for right now, it's just the two teams 
Finding it out on top of the payload with nothing really looking like they're going to be able to secure a kill just yet. But now Bob comes in. This could be the potential for MSM to be able to close things out. And indeed so, already with a pick onto the letter M. Toast taking out Akihabara. And it's back and forth. Sales right needs to use this Kitsune Rush. They had no other option. Save for business, Mr. Business, who's now popped the whole hog. But for MSM, their ultimates have come up. And with that, closing out this round. Conquered. Managing to make it I, I, halfway through to point A. So, MSM, that's their win condition. Winnable? Uh, if, w if you're Concord, um, I will say they at least got the cart past and past that bridge. So, you yes. can at least hold a round bridge, kind of how Mount St. Mary's did there, but they just let the cart get a little bit further. So, you at least have that pretty decent choke point to play around. But it's uh, it's it's five minutes. Like there's no way to sugarcoat it, right? Like you have to hold there for over five minutes. It is not a not going to be a fun time, and you have to play basically perfect if you're Concord. If Mount Saint Marys even gets like one or two pickoffs, they're just going to be able to reset if they lose anybody. Push on in with the ults they probably build up at that point, and yep. just run on through. It is not the best of situations for Concord. Not the situation you want to be in for sure. And you can see these are some these are some picks that are like, okay, we got to do what we got to do. We got to work with what we feel comfortable with. Maybe something that would be able to stand up against Mount St. Mary's. Zeriel still on the Roadhog. Moses and Cozy having a little fun. They're bringing out the Bastion, and now we have a Junkrat as well on top of that. So, was the gates open? Concord. It's like you said, perfection. Perfection needed. I'm a little worried about the Arissa more just because as uh, Moses shows and does keep that Bastion, uh, that'll be something that I don't think Concord were having on their bingo board. I don't think any of us are having any of this on our finger boards <laughs> for some of the for some of the meta picks that we've been seeing to, or for some of the picks that we've been seeing today. Now we're gonna see if Moses is gonna be able to put this Bastion to good use. Really, all you had to worry about is Zeriel. Now, not quite able to. Mr. Business is going to give them the business. Moses goes down, but I think at this point, they're probably going to stick with it, especially with some of the picks that are coming through with Zeriel, who's playing so aggressively. Look how far forward they're pushed up. Now, Cozy to join in. You have all of that Junkrat damage. I got to say, though, Mr. Business putting in some work. Able to, at the very least, <laughs> maybe be able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Zeriel, but with their death, the payload... Only has to go for a little bit further. The letter M, a heroic attempt from her to try and stall things out. But now with the payload going to where it needs to be, the Golden Gates of Victory, Mount St. Mary's wins this series. In, in pretty definitive fashion as well, right? Like, this was not a 3-0. It's like, oh, you know, it was 2-1 on control and 3-2 on hybrid. No, this was... This was dominance coming in from the mounts of Mount St. Mary's. And they set themselves up perfectly now, right? They continue to climb those standings. We'll have to see who loses those 5-0 and o games today. Yeah. But I would not want to be one of them. I would not. Like, you're looking at this team. They're loving this Roadhog meta. They're feeling very confident. And you have a tank and Zerial who can deadlift any game at the flick of their fingers. Like, they can just do whatever they want, it seemed like, on King's Row. And that is a scary thought. I think for Concord... Be happy, because they didn't look great in the Zarya, admittedly. They they looked a little uncomfortable there. I think for them, entering this new patch, try and find that niche and work on it a little bit. Because we know, as we saw, like the mechanics are there. And yeah, a lot of the was. basics are there. I just think they got really thrown off by the Roadhog pick and just never really recovered from it. Yeah, it was... Um... It was, it was just difficult the entire time for Concord. Mount St. Mary's, they just knew how to play the game. Fantastic job from both of our teams, though. And a big congratulations, of course, to Mount St. Mary's for being able to take the win here tonight, 3-0 against Concord University. Uh, we are going to throw to a quick break and get things set up for our next game of Rocket League, which is going to be Iona University versus College of Staten Island with Mr. Bepic and Flater taking over. Hey man, I just can't find a comfortable headset. I mean, I've tried everything. Literally everything. Jeez, my brother. 
I got you. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Oh, that is comfortable. What sound experience would you like to have? I'll have the Fantasy Pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 Wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. What would you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head. I think too small, I got big dreams. You just starting, I'm way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. My people, they got a sore. I'm putting that on the Lord. Ain't accepting, ignore. Just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's got to be real big. I got to make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job, that's real big. Satan trying to live. Oh my God, it's real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars, it's real big. I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live. And I promise I'm trying to. Before you count me out, homie, let me remind you. They was blocking the shine, now I think it's my time to. Careful them dollar signs, like lights, they'll blind you. Let me rewind to. Back when I was broke and I couldn't acquire two cents, and now I got two rents. They were sleeping on me, homie, must have got too big. Call my phone, I be like, who this? Damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new. Smell like can too. I'm fresh forever like canned food. Try and tell me what I can't do. I wanna see the world, my vision on sham mood. I mean, I got goals that's real big. Foes that's real big. Your offer too little, sorry, my soul is real big. Coming into the ring with blows that's real big. I gotta do it big, that's the only way I can live. Accept and ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big, job that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God, is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars, is real big. I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live. Hey man, I just can't find a comfortable headset. I mean, I've tried everything. Literally everything. Jeez, my brother. I got you. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Oh, that is comfortable. What sound experience would you like to have? I'll have the Fantasy Pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 Wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Ah. What would you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head. 
y'all think too small, I got big dreams. You just starting, I'm way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. My people, they got a sore, I'm putting that on the Lord. Ain't accepting, ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's got to be real big. I got to make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job, that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God, is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars, is real big. I got to do it big, the only way that I can live. And I promise I'm trying to. Before you count me out, homie, let me remind you. They was blocking the shine. Now I think it's my time to. Careful them dollar signs like lights, they'll blind you. Let me rewind to. Back when I was broke and I couldn't acquire two cents. And now I got two wrists. They were sleeping on me, homie, must have got too big. Call my phone, I be like, who this? Damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new. Smell like can too. I'm fresh forever like canned food. Try and tell me what I can't do. I wanna see the world, my vision on sham mood. I mean, I got goals that's real big. Foes that's real big. Your offer too little, sorry, my soul is real big. Coming into the ring with blows that's real big. I gotta do it big, that's the only way I can live. Accept and ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big, job that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars is real big. I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live. Hey man, I just can't find a comfortable headset. I mean, I've tried everything. Literally everything. Jeez, my brother. I got you. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Oh, that is comfortable. What sound experience would you like to have? I'll have the Fantasy Pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 Wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. What will you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head. Think too small, I got big dreams. You just start, I'm way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. My people, they got a sore, I'm putting that on the Lord. Ain't accepting, ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big, job that's real big. Satan trying to live. Oh my God, it's real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars, it's real big. I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live. And I promise I'm trying to. Before you count me out, homie, let me remind you. They was blocking the shine, now I think it's my time to. Careful them dollar signs, like lights, they'll blind you. Let me rewind to. Back when I was broken, I couldn't acquire two cents. And now I got two wrists. They were sleeping on me, homie, must have got too big. Call my phone, I be like, who this? Damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new. Smell like can too. I'm fresh forever like canned food. Try and tell me what I can't do. I want to see the world. My vision on sham mood. I mean, I got goals that's real big. Foes that's real big. Your offer too little. Sorry, my soul is real big. Coming into the ring with blows that's real big. I got to do it big. That's the only way I can live.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to week number eight of the ECAC RL stream. My name is Freder, and with me in the casting booth tonight is the very legendary man, Bepic himself. Bepic, how are you doing? Doing fantastic, Flader. So excited to finally be back in the booth for some ECAC action. I've been I've been skirting around the collegiate landscape, getting the, the taste <laughs> of all the different conferences, but it's been a bit since I've gotten to cast ECAC, and it's always a show no matter what, especially tonight. Absolutely, and tonight we got some amazing teams for you, Bebek. I know mm -hmm. your analyst side is tingling for some exciting <laughs> Rocket League action. So, it is going to be Iona going up against College of Saturn Island in a best of seven series. Yes, it is. Both these teams, I mean, collectively between the two, they've lost one series across 14 of them throughout this entire season so far. CSI is 7-0. and They're one of many undefeated teams in the ECAC, but they have to stay relevant with those undefeated teams by winning tonight against Iona, who wants to get back into the conversation of being at the, the very top of the table. I mean, they're, they're up there right now with their 6-1 and one record, but they are not undefeated. And when you've got about 8-10 to 10 undefeated teams in a conference, you want to get back at that same level with the top dogs in the conference. Absolutely. And this seems to be Iona's very first season of ECAC streams. Mm -hmm. So with all these three players walking in, this is week eight. They've had some experience. They have played quite a lot of games coming into ECAC. And now they're ready for more. It's an impressive start for, for their first season in, uh, in the ACAC. It's very, very competitive here. That, is, that has never really changed. And to go 6-1 and one through the first seven series of your first season is, is very, very well done. And now a, a huge test against CSI. I'm, I'm super excited to see how this best of seven goes because I could see it going, the, the distance going six or seven games because I, two top dogs. And we're getting close to the end of the season, Flater. This one's huge for both sides. Absolutely, the playoffs being just around the corner, I believe one or two weeks from now, and we'll have our top dogs as well. But here, we have a taste of what's to come in the playoffs. Yeah, uh, definitely. This could be a matchup that happens early on or late in the playoffs. Like I said earlier, I mean, I, I forgot I wrote it down. We've got six 8-0 teams and then one other 7-0 team that uh, that CSI is competing with, at least in terms of the, the undefeated race. So. There's no telling what seeding would be like in the postseason, so I have no idea when these two teams may meet because at this point, everything's wide open. You've got to keep momentum going to the very end. We're in the, the wide open portion of the, the playoff race, and uh, it's series like these that can tell the tale of your season. Absolutely, and going into this one, I don't believe we have casted for either of these teams before, so... You know, any any some any random prediction that you want to throw in looking at the player names, <laughs> maybe anything out of the box. Maybe you like somebody's team name better. Uh, I, I don't know if I would go with random predictions. I, I'm more of a numbers guy myself, but mm -hmm. CSI, they've dropped two games all season, and mm. they're also undefeated, yes, but, you know, I don't know, only lost one series. That, that's, that's not too big an advantage. However, the two-game stat is, is pretty impressive. I'm going to go with CSI. All right, we have CSI prediction up on the board here in the casting booth. And of course, the team's being ready. So we are ready to hop into this first matchup of this best of seven series. Indeed. Can't wait to see what kind of fantastic display these two squads put in front of all of us. Here we go, Flater. Game one of a best of seven. Let's get going. Let's get going, indeed. And Sonny's looking to do exactly that off the kickoff. Maybe looking for that first shot, not coming through yet, but Iona off to a great start. CSI already on the defensive back foot here, looking for the clear Sarstani. He has the man in the Dominus, and look at that. That is two Dominus in one team, Bepic. We've not seen that in a long time. <laughs> they, they love that flat hitbox, and I can't blame them. I'm not a Dominus fan myself, but I do like that. Uh, it's not outright a plank hitbox, but it's pretty darn flat, and you can get some pretty mon monstrous flicks with uh, with that car. So I'll be looking out uh, for both those dominances for some power down the field. And of course the 50s would not go unnoticed in a car right. like that. So far, no goals being secured by either side. Just a lot of back and forth action with Iona having just a little bit more presence on the midfield. Here we see an opportunity for DJ to shoot it up high. However, the second man not around. 50 doesn't come through, but Sostani takes possession, sends it into the center. Ryan, who a little too early on the catch there, DJ. Still manages to make the clear, but look at that Ooh. opportunity for CSI to take that very first goal. 11 Dean, how does he have it? Yes, he does. Off the bar, taking that first goal for CSI. 
What a fantastic demo that was. Completely opened up the blue box. And 11 Teen scared me there for a second with that shot off the crossbar. But they had their car going in the right direction to polish off the play with a score. When you've got all three offensive players in front of the rest of the defense, you're in a bad spot, especially if you're Iona right there. And that's why they concede the first. Mm, and I don't know if you have seen them having a lot of uh, having a lot of midfield present, but so far CSI they have been able to read that counter attack and get mm -hmm. the first goal. They're looking for more. Here's an opportunity for 11 Teen. Sends it down. Seven over to Max. The angle's good. The save even better. 11 Teen looks to make the save. He sends it over to the opponent though, and this could be an opportunity oh. for the first goal. But they hit the backboard, and that is another opportunity, a miss for Iona. It's a good read though, and it does lead to the eventual score. It's Stontney that puts it in. Bit of a defensive error, but that whole play was set up by a phenomenal counterattack that gave Iona so much agency in the orange half of the field. You love to see it. Iona bringing it right back. We see three saves coming in from DJ, so the defense has been holding up strong. CSI now looking to take the lead right back. Here's Mux sending over to Dredzi. No offensive pressure coming in though as DJ. Great 50. No second touch. 11 teen. Opportunity for a shot on target. Sends it over to the opponents though. Sir Stoney. Good accuracy, but drifts with an even better save. The ball is just lingering around in the midfield. Ryan Hu is going to be sending it over to DJ. A passing shot over to the blue oh orange net. Saved by 11 teen. But Stoney there to make another play and Driftsy there for another save. Half the game gone. These two teams have been extremely competitive so far, Beth. I'm so impressed with CSI's ability to just absorb pressure. I mean, it almost burned them there, but their goal line, fantastic. Now the counterattack leads to a pass and potential shot for, uh, for Mox, but they put it off to the side. Iona will escape what looked like a threatening opportunity. And speaking of which, here's another one set up by Driftsy. Mox in again, can't quite get around the ball for a second time. And so the offensive going to die out, but CSI thriving when they just soak up pressure and then counterattack, oh. though. That was not soaking up pressure. That was their post bailing them out. Ooh, DJ, great redirect. No power on the shot, though. But that does give Iona another opportunity to set an offense right back. DJ eliminated by Mux. Great 50. Ryan sends it over to DJ. An opportunity for the third man, but Driftsy. They had to make the 50, sending it right back into the midfield. Max looks for a fancy play off the reset. It's not going to be getting anything, though. The minute and 40 seconds remaining here. Iona, they might be looking to get out of their own half because they're running out of boo. CSI have been applying a lot of pressure for a while now. And now they find a way out. A shot and a score. It's Stondi again. A quick counterattack, putting Iona up in front. That's how you execute a passing play. And a great counter attack coming in from Iona. We really saw CSI doing a number on the defense, but as soon as they found the opportunity, they sent the ball flying onto the orange net. Iona take the lead. Iona's got 10 shots on target to CSI's 6 right now, and that feels about right in terms of time spent on the opponent half, though. We saw earlier just how dangerous CSI can be in counter, though. <laughs> They're the ones having to defend against DJ's counter attack, and they will, but 80 seconds left. You'd like to see that equalizer go in soon because of how many missed shots we've seen from CSI of, a, of a fantastic passing plays. You want to get that going soon. Just kind of settle down just a bit and see if you can take game one. Oh, but it seems like Iona might just be looking to take the third one here. So much pressure on the orange side. CSI, they're looking to get out of their own half. But here we see Iona once again. Driftsy, no second touch as the 50 from DJ. Quick enough. And here he is once again. Lions right in front of the ball. Sends this pass down center. Stony, is he fast enough? And not quite. 11 teen over to Driftsy. This 2v1 does not go in his favor, but Stony. There to take possession. No second touch opportunity. DJ ends up on goaling and Max will take that second goal. Very much force. Had to rush back to try and make that save. But 11 teen wreaking havoc on the goal line. Opening up that shooting lane for Max. And Max a couple of times has, has missed open shooting opportunities. And right there, not the case whatsoever. Great clutch shot. Now we're tied up in the final 30. You love to see it. It's such a competitive game, Epic. This cannot get any closer with 30 seconds left in this game. Mux looking for a bit of a flip reset pass. I like the way he thinks, but <laughs> he doesn't have enough time for plays like that. This could be an opportunity for Iona to take the third goal. Have they found it? They're still on the offensive side here, and Ryan with shots like that could definitely make it. So Driftsy, even better save, 11 teen. 
gets out of danger, but no offensive presence yet as Serge Sonny takes it right back. A 50 coming in off the backboard, taking it into the corner. The ball going to be dropping down most probably at zero seconds, and V are looking at a game one overtime. All right, I, I was hoping for a competitive series, and we at least get a competitive start to the series. The, the questions posed of these teams, the answers found, and... 2-2, two two, a great demonstration of what both sides are capable of offensively. Is anyone back right now? I don't think so. That's game one. CSI, take it. All right. All right, Bepic. Okay, just one beat. More than enough for Mux to put that goal in. And Drifzy already ready to make sure it goes in. CSI off the game one comeback. Do take game one. And like you said, Bepic, this game could not be any more competitive. However, we did expect that overtime to last a little bit longer. Definitely. That's not something we saw really at all throughout game one. Was Iona overcommitting in offense? And I get that it's... 14 seconds off a kickoff so maybe you're not completely set but still that's an important start to this best of seven for the college of staten island and i don't know gave that up kind of easily there an extra time so I'm, I'm sure they'll rebound it is a long series after all they had a great bout of offense at 13 shots on target to csi's eight uh i don't not in a bad spot whatsoever after mm. dropping that one Absolutely not, and we were discussing this in uh, the pre-production part of the stream. Iona and a CSI both extremely committed, and they might just be looking to take this to game number six or seven. So a lot of games ahead for a CSI. However, they do end up taking game one shots. Uh, let's look at. Uh, let's have a look at shots. Uh, Epic Iona. They have a total of thirteen shots, while CSI have almost around half of that. And that just goes to show how much offensive presence Iona had, but not being able to convert so many of those shots did give mm. CSI those counter-attacking opportunities. That wasn't for lack of trying, though. The, uh, the the defense of CSI was phenomenal. Like I was saying, so much in Game 1, they looked content with just soaking up pressure and making those heroic goal line saves. And uh, once they did, the, those counterattacks is where they thrived. And, I mean, they had their own extension, extended possessions. Ooh. But uh, regardless, their defense looks solid right now. I was going to have to find a way through, whether that be shoring up their defense or just applying even more pressure in Game 2. We shall see as uh, once again here in game number two. No early goals coming in from either of the sides at 11 sending it over to <laughs> towards the and you love to see it. This man was looking for the exact same play earlier as the flip reset pass finally comes to fruition, sends it over to Drifty, and he makes no mistake in putting this one at the back of the blue net. Imagine you're Ryan Who right there, just sitting on the goal line, seeing two. Phenomenal players in the air about to take a shot on you and you have no idea which way it's coming from I can't blame the own goal right there again It's a very much forced own goal that Iona's having to put in because they just have to react to what CSI is throwing at them That's the kind of offense that can win a championship and CSI is putting it on display right now Nothing you could do about an offensive shot like that. Ryan, who once again caught off guard here, could be a victim of a double as the second man, Mux, decides to take it a little too slow. Patience nice. levels very high for the CSI side as they're still up by one. Here's Drifty off the backboard, looks to make a clear. DJ does have the flip reset, and in indeed gets a touch off the backboard, but it's not going to be enough for a goal as Mux looks for a pass down center. The pass is good, the shot even better, the save the best. As Stani comes in with an epic save for his team, Iona, they're still trailing by one, and they're looking to make this equalizer happen. Love the thought there from Iona, but not quite executing. Now they have to rush back again. A lot of double commit jump saves that could lead to follow-up opportunities for CSI if they're any further pushed up. But uh, that's not been the case so far. When the, those double commits happen on the Iona goal Ooh. line, they're able to get back in time to make saves and then put shots on the other side of the field like that. It's That's a ripper flater and Iona, they're, they're so close to scoring Ooh. right now, but God. that defense solidified. And one side wall to the other, they keep on bringing shots on target. However, wow. CSI, like you said, solid defense right onto the offensive side here as DJ gets intercepted immediately. 11 are looking for a pass off a double touch, but it doesn't come through. Sir Sandy does get the clear, sends it over to the midfield. 11 there to pick it up over to Drifsy. A double touch opportunity, but the save comes in as well. Half the game gone. Iona, they're still up by one. Iona, they're rather trailing by one. CSI on the other side. They are having a phenomenal showing both on offense and defense. 
certainly, but only one goal for the first half of this game. A little surprising considering what we saw in the in game number one of this series, but both defenses impressing me so much at the moment, though that probably should have been a shot on target. DJ might have got a little bit too excited at the prospect of Staten Island messing up in defense, but regardless, Iona has had uh, some decent looks and they're developing a lot of good chances. That one's another one. So close to scoring, but the defense prevails and finds a way out. That it does, and uh, with two minutes remaining here, we're in a bit of an end game oh. now as Iona looks to take that very first goal, but they keep hitting the backboard or the post for that matter. They still cannot find the goal. They're looking for it, but CSI on the counter, a bullet towards the blue net, saved by Stoney as he sends us right back into the midfield. Here's DJ looking for the second touch, won't find it. 11 off the ceiling, maybe a ground pinch, maybe a pass. It's going to be a pass over to Mux. Trying to 50 the ball in, but it comes to no dice. CSI up by one. Still like at the start of this game, Iona, they're looking for that very first goal. Eight shots for CSI. Six of them have been saved by Iona. They're holding on. <laughs> it feels like by a thread, but they are finding these important clears and shots on oh. target. Stondi has been so influential for Iona's offense throughout this series so far, and that's a huge goal for their squad. Absolutely, and they definitely needed this very first goal. CSI side, you know, they tried making that defensive save, but after such a long time, a whiff was bound to come which it did CSI now all tied up here in this game Iona look for an opportunity 11 a bit of a midfield uh, throwaway there is Ryan who sends it over to DJ a three direct attempt comes in from Ryan taken away by Iona is Mux looking for a fabulous redirect over to Drifsy a pass comes down center can they make something of this play yet it seems like they can't. Iona, opportunity on the ball, taken away by Mux, who looks to make a double touch pass here. DJ still gets the save, so a lot of back and forth action. Iona on the back foot, but they're looking to make their way out of it. Yeah, they're doing just fine on the back foot. They seem comfortable in that situation. And with this clear, we'll see what they can do with it. The ball gets over Mux, but 11 will bail their teammate out. Close shave for CSI. Don't want to be giving up a goal here. Instead, well, okay, they will be giving up a goal here. It's Stondi again. That's their second of the game. I think fourth overall for the team. And that's a go-ahead for Iona in the final 30. Mm, 11 had no boost to work with there in the corner and the second man I believe Drifsy get bu got bumped away mm. the defense just not ready for the shot on target Iona off of a great offensive play there finally take that one goal lead the number of shots actually end up start, uh, start to make a little bit more sense now versus Sony looks to take the third one the confirmation goal so far hasn't come through still CSI in a really good position to take this into overtime can they do it Sir Sony Takes it high over the midfield and the CSI, they have been losing all these opportunities that they've been receiving in the past few seconds that it seems like Iona, they might just be taking their game two here. Impressive stuff from Iona. They, like you eloquently put it, Flair, they were on the back foot there for a, for a large chunk of the game. I mean, nine shots, yes, they, they found clears uh, frequently, but it seemed like every time CSI would move into the blue end, they were putting difficult to save plays towards that Iona net, and Iona did, made the save. I mean, six for nine in the, their saves on, uh, on shot ratio, and they, they found a way to score on the other end. Stondi has been huge for them on the offensive side of the field. Absolutely, you love to see it. Iona stepped up their gameplay, made the defense a lot better, and now we have to see what kind of answer CSI comes up with. Otherwise, Iona, with the kind of showing that we have have we've seen here on both the sides, like especially on defense, things are looking to get a little more competitive. <laughs> Definitely, but that game was on a razor thin margin. CSI oh, yeah. very well could have taken it if they sink one more opportunity that Iona doesn't get. Uh, that could be CSI 2-0 up in the series instead of a, a tied-up best-of-seven going into Game 3. So I, I still don't think either one of these teams really has an advantage in this best-of-seven just yet. Iona does have that small tick of momentum that comes from winning the last game. Absolutely, and that could shatter off this first goal. Should it mm -hmm. be scored by CSI? We'll find out soon enough. It's five minutes on the clock. Here we go. The first kickoff coming in, and it's going to be going in a bit of a way for Iona. 
Should they take possession, which they do, but look at that, the amount of bumps being made here by CSI. They take the possession right back into their own hands. Drifsy sending it up high. Does he have the boost to work for the second touch, though? I don't believe he does. Mux once again on the ball. Ryan Hoon, no second touch. Opportunity for Drifsy to send it in the back of the net, and it's a bullet. Nobody can stop that one. 17 seconds in. CSI take goal one. Well, you're right, Flater. The momentum gone because of the first goal going CSI's way. That's a defensive mistake from Iona that I, I can't remember a single one like that we saw in game two. I mean, Iona was near perfect on their back end, but here they, they open the gates with a slight too heavy touch off that back wall, and that'll be CSI with a nice little cushion in their back pocket, but they scored first in game number two, and it was the, the roar back from Iona that ended up uh, summing up that second game. Absolutely, and so far CSI, you know, taking that first goal, definitely something oh. to look forward to. But look at that, Iona, they just bring it right back. What a bullet of a shot coming in from Ryan, who their great pass, of course, from DJ as well. Credit where credit is due, but we are all tied up here in game number three. Perhaps I'm just blowing out steam right now. It doesn't seem like Iona was phased at all by giving up that first goal. They get right back to business on the other end. That is a textbook passing play right across the field, and the ripper of a shot is pristine. Phenomenal answer, and this is the game three I was hoping for. This is the series I was hoping for. Okay, um, uh, we'll pretty suspicious that. play coming in from <laughs> CSI there as they end up bumping their own team, made giving Iona a bit of an advantage here on the offensive side as we see Sistani taking it up high. No flip reset for him though, sends it over to DJ Mux, makes no mistake to make that save, sending it into the midfield. Sistani needs to turn and he turns quickly before getting eliminated as Drifsy takes it up high, right back onto the blue half we go. Opportunity for the offensive reigning for CSI is Mux sends a shot towards the target, saved away. A lot of back and forth here, Bevic, but I'm not seeing who's going to come out on top. No, it's not really clean back and forth right now. There's a lot of misses, miscalculations that both sides are, uh, I guess, using to throw off their opponent. I'm not sure if it's uh, strategic or not, but I think the first team that settles down and pieces together a uh, midfield passing play, like kind of like that, will, will be in the, the better spot of the two. But again, the, the team's proven me wrong as Iona defends it well and gets out immediately. They do, and so far we're still pretty much tied up in this game. The offense Ooh. holding on strong for CSI, though, as they do put a shot on target, saved away by the Iona's defense. Now on the offensive side, flicks towards the net, saved away by Driftsy. Now opportunity for a counter-attack, but like you said, mis missed touches and miscommunications all the way through this game as both of these teams are trying to outpace another. Okay, Driftsy does find that touch, but... The back and forth going to stall for a second as Stondi puts into the orange box. The drop down shot from Ryan, saved by 11. Another great read on the back line. Now a 2v1 the other way. 11 dropping it down for Drift so you couldn't make contact. It's a sloppy counter attack play. Doesn't result in a goal, but that was still a good look from CSI created by their back line defense. Now the ball just lingering around in front of the midfield here. Bebic, we might just see the goal being coming in, but Sistani is there to make the save. I'm very surprised the second man did not be around for, d d for that second touch. Unfortunately for CSI, they're right back on a square one. We see Drifts, he's sending it down center for Mux, the third man. There to make a play if Mux can get this oh. pass down center, which he does, but Ryan who makes an even better save off of that bicycle hit. Mux being around for a little while longer. He wants to be a wow. nuisance, and a nuisance he is. Sends it over to the third man, but the D, the offense is not ready for these touches. I can't blame him. I mean, who expects Mux to win all three challenges and get the ball in the perfect spot to score? I wasn't expecting it, but oh. Iona, they weren't expecting it either. It doesn't matter. Rocket League's a game of improvisation. They find a way to get the ball out, turn it into this counterattack play, and take the lead. Uh, Max was so close to making that save. Unfortunately, Iona, they do end up taking that one goal lead. A minute and 30 seconds left. They're looking a little strong now, but we shall see if CSI can bring it right back. They definitely have the mechanics and the offense to do so. And Max has the accuracy to make it happen. We're all tied up in game three. These teams don't blink. They give up a goal, whether it's due to sloppy play or just getting out play, doesn't matter. They give up a goal. They get right back to business on the other end of the field. It's another answer that's just clean. The center pass, the, the final shot, it's perfect. And now we're tied up. Not for long, though. Stondi putting in the go-ahead right back for Iona. 
I cannot look for a better phrase than this. These two teams do not blink. Nothing else that could be said about Team Iona here as they take the third goal right back. Taking the lead back as well from CSI. And this all happened in the last 10 seconds. Unbelievable. What we're seeing right now, the goal is just pouring in right now. And, well, that's a double commit in defense for Iona. Might give some space. That demo oh. certainly will, but... The shot maybe it was intended to be a pass. It works out as either one. Drop down ball oh. is taken away by the Iona defense. 11 team just off target. Muxer drifts. He 50 the ball just wide of the target. Crafty offense there from CSI. But Iona once again survive and find a way to put the pressure back on their opponent. And there's Ryan who sends it down center. So it's just like you said, Bepic. Both of these teams ever ready to make offensive plays work out. And this time is CSI's time to shine as they've been spending a lot of time on the blue side. And they have been gonna be they're gonna be making it worth it as they take this equalizer right back into their own hands. Oh, okay. I was originally watching DJ's perspective in that, that goal, and it looked so bad. But I didn't notice that Driftsy was on the goal line pressuring uh, the, the early ascent for DJ there. So they had to feather their boost to stay in the air, and that's why they couldn't make a read on the play. That's a great aggression play out of this, uh, the College of Staten Island, and it gets them tied up. The calculated moves here from both offenses, phenomenal. And that one, I mean, it's not exactly calculated. I mean, yeah, it's calculated, but it's not the, the prettiest of place to back wall. Uh, touch their flater, but it works, and <laughs> just like that, CSI is in the lead. And uh, this has all, uh, this goal is only possible to the, due to the momentum that CSI has been bringing off that kickoff. You know, we saw mm. 11 team going up high on that second touch, sending it over to Max, who put that ball right into the back of the net. Only a one goal lead, though, so nothing to be sh nothing to be afraid about. As Iona still very much in this game, we got 20 seconds left. They can set up an attack right here as we see Sirstani taking it into the midfield. The second touch for him does come in. Ryan, who opportunity of the air dribble, epic. Do we see it? There, he's going up high. He's it over to Stony, but Stony, he's heading back. I'm not sure he's supposed to do so. Only five seconds remaining here. CSI might take game three. Oh, the ball stays up though, and so we're going to get a try here on zero seconds, but it's all to do for the Iona offense, and Mux knows that, just spikes the ball down immediately, end of the game for CSI. I wish I'd been keeping track in my notes of how many lead changes we were getting in, uh, in every game, because so far, I, I feel like we're at 10, 12 lead changes the first two games mm. later. I mean, that was as back and forth a game as they come. I believe here in game three, we did have a total of uh, two uh, ba two lead changes. We saw CSI 1-1, uh, 2-2, one, one, and then over to 3-3. Three, three. It was only after that we saw CSI taking another goal, and of course, they made it worth it. We, and, you know, uh, now that we see Iona, they do not have as many shots as they used to. Six shots on target. CSI this time, however, they have more shots. So this just goes to show that the amount of offensive presence they've had here in this game has been a lot more than the past few. Yeah, definitely a point worth noting, but it doesn't seem like these offenses really care how many shots they put on target. I mean, game number one, CSI gets out shot by five, and they win. Game two, Iona has the same amount of shots as, as CSI, and they win. And then this one, um, I mean, they, they put three goals up on six shots, 50% mm, shooting yeah. is nothing to scoff at whatsoever. It just feels like we're in a, we're in a shootout series right now where <laughs> you take opportunities as they come, and you best put them home, and these teams are putting them home. Absolutely, every single member fast to the ball, making shots count, every single pass made with intent, and that's what we like to see here in the casting booth. Five minutes on the clock once again, we are here into game number four. Unbelievable. CSI barely out in front right now, and Iona right on their heels, though off kickoff. It is CSI with the initial bout of pressure. Driftsy up in the air, looking for that back wall. The flip reset Ooh. found, but Stondi, the save made. It was precarious, but again, Iona somehow find a way out. That they do. Now on the 11 side, who's looking for a shot on target. Driftsy takes it up high, but look at that. DJ is uh, going on a bit of a, d a demolition derby here as he takes out two, but no presence of an offensive pressure comes in from Iona's side here as we see the sh ball being passed from one corner to the other. Not being uh, not being made of anything off it yet as we see 11 team. Sending it down center, DJ with the intercept, no second touch for him. Max being a nuisance there in the corner for how long though as Sir Stondi puts it right up high in front of the orange net. 11 team 
looks to make that clear, but nobody to follow it up. Iona, they have been on this offensive side for quite a while now. Boost is running out. Do oh. they go for the rotation? I believe they do. So CSI, an opportunity for the first goal. Now showing up as Drifts, he goes with the flip reset. It's not gonna be of much significance, but this might just be it. Sirstani comes in with an epic save. Another huge save on a crafty play once more from CSI. I don't know how Iona are reading these plays as they come, though. This is a bit of a stretched out defense for CSI. The spike oh. from DJ is clean. Ouch. Iona take game, goal number one here in game four. Oh, wow, DJ, the perfect read off the backboard. The defense just not ready for the shot. 11 Teen had the right idea, but could not make contact. And it is Iona's goal to take. You know, every single time we see the momentum being built up after a win, the other team just takes it right back. Well, off kickoff, Iona actually with the advantage here. But if they allow a chance here, I would not be surprised to see a CSI goal because of that point you just made with the answers uh, coming in spades, it feels like, in this best of seven. And here's one of those opportunities. Drifts, he almost found Staunty in the air, but no such luck. The clear for Iona found, and CSI pushed back their back wall. Oh, Here. opportunity for a pass for Staunty. However, the teammate's not ready for it. It does make sense. I mean, not, not everybody can expect a pass like that off the pinch in the corner. 11 going for a bit of a breezy here. DJ is not going to be having any of that. So Sony in the corner takes it past one. But here's Mux right on the ball looking for some kind of a play here. But has no momentum to work with. So the clear does come in. We see CSI on the bit of a defensive side here as Iona look to make more plays. They have no possession to work with. So CSI sends them right onto the offensive half. 11 -teen. Can he get the shot on target? It doesn't seem like it. DJ off the backboard looking to make more and more plays. The second touch finally comes through and Iona head right back onto the offensive side. There's a beat pass two. It's a 1v1, 11 team versus Ryan, but 11 team let the ball skip a bit too far off their hood initially, but still possession and a shot for Driftsy and CSI, though they better rush back again because Iona, whenever they do get that ball over the center line, it's always a quick hit on the other end, standing. As their opportunity saved by Mux, who, with 20 boosts in the tank, will look to get the ball centered through oh. the first, not the second. CSI looking to maintain possession here, which is a, an arena they've struggled in for the most part, Flater, but at least getting good opportunities. Oh, that oh, was another close. one for CSI. It hits the post, and unfortunately, it's Iono right back on the offense side, looking to make the second goal work. 11 team comes in with the save, but the follow up is there to send up this ground, set up this ground pinch. It doesn't come through, but DJ needing to make a huge save. 11 team once again on the side, while this man can be a bit of a nuisance when it comes to the offensive side here, and he's being exactly that. Sony, however, does manage to make the save. Here's Drifty on the mm -hmm. ball, looks for the air dribble bump, doesn't find it, it doesn't matter. Iona, they've been keeping that uh, keeping that one goal lead to themselves, and they're looking to make it two as a shot comes in for Stoney. Even better save from 11 team, only 60 seconds remaining here in game four. Bepic, who do you think is going to take this one? <laughs> That's a, a mean question to ask, Flater. I have absolutely no idea, and I'm going to leave it at that because either one of these, we could see about five goals being scored in the next 45 seconds, and it would not yeah. surprise me. Here's one. 11 team ties us up late in game four. <laughs> Speak of the devil. Speak of the devil, and here it comes, and it's awful pass from Drifty. You'd think that, you'd think that uh, Drifty was the one to make the double touch. 11 team comes out of nowhere, and it takes the ball right onto the back of the net. They're all tied up here. 44 seconds remaining. We see CSI coming out on top with that kickoff. 11 team wouldn't be getting any more touches on the offensive side here. But here's Drifty trying to pick up the broken pieces of that attack. Couldn't find much. So boost running out. We see Iona heading right onto the offensive side. DJ being a bit of a nuisance there in the midfield. However, 11 team says no to any of that. Sends us right back on to the offense. Here's DJ with a great intercept. Let's look for a double, but he cannot find it. 15 seconds remaining here, Bebek, and overtime does seem very likely. Unless, uh, ball going across the field, no one really makes contact, so we stay in the center third for now. It's a fight for possession, we'll get that final shot on triple zeros. Drift C lets the ball fall off the ceiling, the defense will keep it up as well. OT for the second time in this series, but it's the fourth straight one goal game. We'll see how long it lasts. 
We shall see. The first overtime did not last for more than 13 seconds. This time, however, it seems like a different story as both of the teams seem to be ready with whatever's coming their way. 11 however. Look at that. Fancy mechanics all the way through. Cannot convert it. Not so fast as we see Max, the man in the Fennec, looking to make more and more passing plays. The 50. Does he go for it? No, he goes for a pass off the enemy. And does it work out? It almost does. Driftsy makes a play on the blue net it does not work out for him not yet dj pass over to mux could turn fatal but ryan who's there to make the save mux sends it down center drifts he can does he want to make the play this team is playing a very patient game here and i love to see it certainly it's it's calculated at times it's chaotic it's such a great mix of rocket league styles right now sometimes flashy sometimes textbook right there a little bit of both 11 team Trying to get it center with a flashy style, but let's end up connecting. So, a minute has elapsed in extra time. 11 teen. Oh, there must be glue on their front bump with how close they're keeping the ball in some of these dribbles. It is absolutely phenomenal the plays that CSI are putting together to get out of defense. And I own the same, they just haven't done it a little bit. <laughs> Unbelievable plays coming whoa, out from, whoa. The, from all these teams, but okay, a bit of a miscommunication there on the defensive side. I believe I was holding tab, so I did see some of the pings being spiked there. Maybe a bit of a server issue. However, it doesn't matter. CSI, they end up that they end up taking that goal very easily. That wow, <laughs> Iona's defense has looked near perfect a large chunk of this series, and then right there it collapses just a bit. Um, okay, that's that's the end of game four. CSI now on uh, now on match point here, but I think it's deserved with 14 shots on target for Staten Island and only six for Iona. I mean, two narratives right there. CSI with a huge flux of uh, uh, influx of uh, offense here in game four, being held in check by Iona's stellar defense, but Iona being held to six shots the last two games not a good trend. Absolutely. Now, CSI, they are up by one, I believe, here in this best of seven. Things are going to be getting a lot more heated up. Iona, if they want to make this comeback, they have to do it now. Yeah, they have to. I think they're up by two now. 3-1 uh, up in this, this best of seven. Um, right. CSI's just found a way to come up clutch at the end of games. I mean, you think about uh, game number one with that overtime goal right off kickoff. They got right to it, scored, it took the early series lead. Then game three, uh, they were down like 2-1 with 90 seconds left and then ended up winning 4-3, just going blow for blow with Iona, their offense being a huge proponent of that tick mark next to their name on the scoreboard. And then in that last Absolutely. one, I mean, it was, it was a close game, yes, but they had so many shots on target. It felt like that was a CSI slanted game. And now, game five, Flater. <laughs> I, I still don't know what to expect, even with CSI up 3-1. I mean, they are at match point, definitely would not know what to expect, but we can expect Mux to make that open net shot on target, which he does. Only seven seconds in, and we finally see a team break, and making sure that the momentum carries on forward into this game. And obviously, we see CSI at match point, so Bepic, things are looking a little bad for Iona now. Yeah, I mean... Momentum hasn't really seemed to have huge impacts in this series so far. I'm not too worried about Iona because they usually bounce back well, though that was a real opportunity for CSI to make it 2-0, and I can't remember how many multi-goal leads we've seen in this series so far. But Iona saves it, they get out, and they immediately apply pressure on the Staten Island end. That we do see coming in from the Iona side, but we here we see CSI now heading us heading right back on the offense with Mux. Looking for a pass down center, Ryan who graded a pass over to DJ, but they're still stuck in their very own half. 11 teen. Cannot have anybody to follow that one up as Iona looks to get this ball cleared away. DJ, not the best touch is gonna result. The ball going over to the backboard, making this pass down center, but the team not ready to make the shot on target. Like you said, multi-goal leads have been difficult to come by here in this best of seven series, but CSI is working very hard for it right now. That they are, but Counterattacks very potent for both sides. Stanti and Ryan, oh. the dump off, the shot. It is blocked by 11. -teen. Good read on what Iona was putting together there in the orange end. And on the other side, CSI, an opportunity with the lack of a back wall touch the first time around. Stanti, good for it the second. 
And 90 seconds in, the uh, the pace that we're seeing offense being played has slowed down just a hair. So, uh, still an opportunity oh. to come, and as soon as I say it, CSI go up 2-0. Multi-goal lead. Here it is, Bevic. One of the rare sights here in this best of seven series. CSI makes it work, though. The goal coming in from Driftsy there at the end. Only a minute and 30 seconds in. CSI up by two, but that does tell us that Iona, they have plenty of time to make this comeback. Certainly. Um, I'm still a little concerned, though, with this being a must-win game for Iona, and now down by several goals. I want to see an answer as soon as to make sure they're all right. Otherwise, they're going to have to uh, put together some good strings of pressure here at the end of this game, which is very difficult to do in a match point situation. Absolutely. We shall see whether they're able to make this game their own. Unfortunately, very hard right now coming in from CSI as... They're looking to make another possession player. 11 oh. Look at that. Huge peaks coming in from this man. You know, uh, from the from the perspective of that third man, Ryan Hu, he saw both of these players going way too wide. We saw Max going yeah. into the other side, looking for expecting a pass. So, confusion made by the two offensive players. And I am very much impressed by the kind of offensive showing here in this game, number five. You know, I don't remember which game it was, but I remember saying I would hate to be in that position that Ryan Hu was just in. And the, the point is repeatable here at that 2v1 where the offense was in full control and executed it perfectly. CSI a deserved 3-0 lead right now. Everything's working for them in offense, and their defense has stayed the same. Iona's going to have to put together something impressive here in the final half of game number five. Final half the business end here in this game number five CSI up by three Iona they're looking for their very first goal they haven't found it yet because CSI they have been absolutely domin dominant on the offensive side DJ looking for the pinch clear would not be finding it but they have to make these risky risky plays now they don't have any choice they gotta have some kind of pressure Mux receiving that pass from Drissy. They get it center, but the net's open. 11 Jean was playing aggressively, which is par for the course of the player like 11 Jean. They love to go for demos and plays like that, but right here, it's a mistake. Ryan, who capitalizes on it, and here we go, Flater. Iona starting to come back. A sudden breakaway in possession coming in from the CSI side does give Iona that very first goal. And like you said, Bepic, still plenty of time left on the clock for Iona to make this comeback real. It all comes down to these players right here. DJ applying a lot of early pressure. Ryan Hu sends it right back into the corner looking for a pass. Sir Sonny now in the exact same position. DJ opportunity, but it's a little too slow as Drifty makes the save. But that is two people on the defense. Ryan Hu! Who and what are you doing, my guy? You were supposed to make that shot, unfortunately. Iona, one opportunity, a miss, multiple to come, but CSI right now, they're the ones in charge, looking to make a shot on target. Drifts off the ceiling, looking for the second touch. Can he find it? No, he doesn't. So he looks to make the play here, sends it right back into the blue half. But, unfortunately for Iona, time's ticking down, and they still have to make this two-goal lead. At the very least, for Iona, they're not having to suffer CSI unrelenting pressure, and that's a mistake on the back end for Staten Island. Leads to one shot, maybe more, with Ryan keeping the, the possession in play for Iona. Shot from DJ just short, and Ryan, a zero boost, has to rotate back here to defend against 11 teen off the sidewall. Flip reset. Oh, wow. Play shut down by Stondi, but what's is right there to waste even more clock is... CSI playing very well here in the, the late stages of Game 5 with their insurance goal Ooh, intact. And what was that, Vlader? What a pinch. Oh, cannot go unnoticed for sure, but they were not able to make something oh, off my. it. Not yet, as we see Mux looking for an opportunity. They finally wow. do something with well, there, but Ryan who comes in with an even better save. This kind of defense is only seen at the highest level of Rocket League, and we're seeing it right now, and you love to see it. Nine seconds remaining though, CSI's defense and their amazing offensive showing here in Game 5 is going to be giving them this best of seven series win as we hit zero seconds. The players already leaving the lobby not too happy about this game, but it's going to be CSI taking this best of seven series win here in Game 5. Bepic, what a series this has been. Yeah, that, that series delivered. I mean, the only multi-goal lead we saw was in the last game of the series and... 
I, I thought it could go seven. I, I think it, I still think that it could have gone seven, if not for the performance of CSI in the very, very late stages of these games to somehow eke out the smallest uh, of margined victories and uh, get that series lead going into game five. The two goals, he, the match point series lead going into game five and, and close it out with a phenomenal start offensively. Uh, here we have CSI finally breaking that pattern of taking one game each and coming out on top here by taking multiple games there at the end of the series. You love to see it. the kind of offensive showing coming in from CSI there at the end. Definitely outsmarted Iona with those mechanics and with that pace, setting their own pace and making sure the ball is under their control, making sure mm -hmm. that they're shutting down the defense. You love to see it coming in from CSI, but I believe that is going to be it for the ECAC Rocket League stream here in week number eight. Bepic, this was once again uh, one of the most exciting series that we've seen all week and I love, I love this cast. Definitely, and we'll get to interview one of the players as well from us, from mm. CSI, I figure. So we, we don't have to leave you all just yet, fortunately. We get to relive just a little bit more of that, uh, that phenomenal series we just watched. But that'll be after a break, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Accept and ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids. Just kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big, job that's real big. Say trying a little, my God is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cards is real big. I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live. Hey man, I just can't find a comfortable headset. I mean, I've tried everything. Literally everything. Jeez, my brother. I got you. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Uh, that is comfortable. What sound experience would you like to know? I'll have the Fantasy Pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 Wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. What would you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head. I think too small, I got big dreams. You just starting, I'm way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. My people, they got a sore, I'm putting that on the Lord. Ain't accepting, ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids. Just kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big, job that's real big. Satan trying to live. Oh my God, it's real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cards, it's real big. I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live. And I promise I'm trying to. Before you count me out, homie, let me remind you. They was blocking the shine, now I think it's my time to. Careful them dollar signs, like lights, they'll blind you. Let me rewind to. Back when I was broke and I couldn't acquire two cents, and now I got two wrists. They were sleeping on me, homie, must have got too big. Call my phone, I be like, who this? Damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new. Smell like can too. I'm fresh forever like canned food. Try and tell me what I can't do. I wanna see the world, my vision on sham mood. I mean, I got goals that's real big. Foes that's real big. Your offer too little, sorry, my soul is real big. Coming into the ring with blows that's real big. I gotta do it big, that's the only way I can live.
accept and ignore Just kicking down all the doors Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it It's gotta be real big I gotta make it just for my kids And for their kids, it's kids That's wealth, years and years Promise my brother soon as he out to finish this bid We finna do it bigger than anybody ever did The odds is real big Job that's real big Say trying a little, my God, is real big Stayed up on the grind on the cars is real big I gotta do it big The only way that I can live Hey man, I just can't find a comfortable headset. I mean, I've tried everything. Literally everything. Jeez, my brother. I got you. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Oh, that is comfortable. What sound experience would you like to know? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 Wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Wow. What will you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head. Think too small, I got big dreams. You just start I'm way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. My people, they got a saw. I'm putting that on the Lord. Ain't accepting, ignore. Just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother soon as he out to finish this bid. We finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job that's real big. Say trying to live. Oh my God, it's real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars, it's real big. I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live. And I promise I'm trying to. Before you count me out, homie, let me remind you. They was blocking the shine, now I think it's my time to. Capping them dollar signs like lights, they'll blind you. Let me rewind to. Back when I was broken, I couldn't acquire two cents. And now I got two rents. They was sleeping on me, homie, must have got too big. Call my phone, I be like, who this? Damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new. Smell like can too. I'm fresh forever like canned food. Try and tell me what I can't do. I want to see the world, my vision on Shamu. That mean I got goals that's real big. Foes that's real big. Y'all offer too little, sorry, my soul is real big. Coming into the ring. Hello and welcome back to the week number 8 our ECACRL stream. My name is Flader and still in the casting booth with me is Bepic. We got 11 teen here from the College of Saturn Island White roster. 11 teen, how are you feeling after this hard fought win? I'm feeling pretty good, thank you. Well, that, that was a, a extremely hard fought win. Like every game except for that last one was a one goal game or right, in overtime as well. How did you guys thrive in those extremely tight, high pressure situations? Um, you know, it was it was pretty close. But uh, when when the pressure really got to us and we needed to lock in, just started calming a little more, uh, just focused and leaned forward in our chairs a little, you know. <laughs> Of course, that's that's the secret. I, I assume to your your eight and zero record right now. I mean, you guys are undefeated now at the at the top of uh, ECAC essentially. Essentially, what what were the strengths that got you guys to this point? Uh, I mean, we've been a roster for a really long time. We've been mm -hmm. together for almost two years now. So wow, uh, we're just used to playing with each other. It's gotten to the point where we can openly communicate about any issues, and so we we're growing a lot faster now and. We've gotten through all the hurdles, and we're doing well now. So you love to see it, Bepic. We did see an amazing series from, say, CSI there at the end moments of this game. I know they, they put on a really good show, but CSI, of course, 11 teen, great series overall. I just got one more question to, for you. Is there anybody you'd like to shout out? Yeah, I mean, I'd love to shout out my teammates. Thank them for carrying me on offense. <laughs> um, and then shout out... Uh, our school, we have a great esports program. Shout out our director, and yeah. All, All right. right. Uh, well, yeah, maybe you want to take us out? 
Uh, sure, th- eleven team. Thank you for joining us. I, I appreciate uh, you joining us in the booth and putting on a great show for us. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. All right, Flater, that does it for us on the ECAC stream. It was a pleasure as always casting with you, and of course, Absolutely. love to our production pack games in the background, KTAD as well. Always uh, phenomenal to to work with esports mm-hmm. you and the ECAC. So we'll see you all next time. Thank you for joining us, and have a good night. That's real big, I gotta do it big That's the only way I can live Accept and ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids, just kids. That's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out and finished his bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big, job that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cards is real big. I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live. Hey man, I just can't find a comfortable headset. I mean, I've tried everything. Literally everything. Jeez, my brother. I got you. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Uh, That is comfortable. What sound experience would you like to have? I'll have the Fantasy Pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 Wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. What will you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head. Y'all think too small, I got big dreams. You just starting, I'm way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. My people, they got a saw. I'm putting that on the Lord. Ain't accepting, ignore. Just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's got to be real big. I got to make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids. That's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job, that's real big. Satan trying a little. My God, is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cards. It's real big. I got to do it big. The only way that I can live. And I promise I'm trying to Before you count me out, homie, let me remind you They was blocking the shine, now I think it's my time to Capping them dollar signs like lights, they'll blind you Let me rewind to Back when I was broke and I couldn't acquire two cents And now I got two rents They was sleeping on me, homie, must have got too big Call my phone, I be like, who this? Damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new Smell like can too I'm fresh forever like canned food Try and tell me what I can't do I wanna see the world, my vision on Shamu I mean I got goals that's real big Foes that's real big Your offer too little, sorry, my soul is real big Coming into the ring with blows that's real big I gotta do it big, that's the only way I can live